We are around a bit more than 18 years, so founded in 97. And our main markets has been a long time uh, on the optical transmission and systems design. So we have software for physical layer modeling of complete transmission systems, but also software for link engineering tasks, and more recently spent much more effort on designing active and passive integrated photonics, but also have software for designing waveguides and fibers now. Um, main offices in Berlin and Germany, <laughs> and we have offices in Boston and uh, Minsk and Belarus. Um, as I mentioned, there are uh, many customers, most of them from the telecom area, so that's where our um, uh, big um, experiences lay in the telecom arena, and we're moving at also towards other um, areas nowadays. Um, for this presentation, I have uh, this type of uh, overview I want to give. I want to uh, focus on circuit level modeling of integrated photonics application, then show you an example how to seamlessly integrate circuit level simulation with layout information, and to perform automatic uh, parameter optimizations and uh, tolerance analysis. So compared to electronic design automation, so what's, what's the difference? Why, is it, why can't we use all cadence or mentor or something? Um, main big problem is actually, oh, too fast. Uh, we have not only uh, electronic simple elements here, we have pretty a, a diverse set of very complex basic uh, building blocks. So there could be this active ones of the electronic elements, the passive ones, they're all very different and they have sometimes very complex and um, compact models there. On the other problem is we have like different types of um, um, signals now. So beside the electrical, we also have the optical signals and they should be uh, regarded in the forward and backward direction. So in order to combine all this, you need a fast and accurate way of performing circuit modeling. And you need new scalable approaches for this. And uh, we implemented this on our way or our answer to this question is our product called VPR Component Maker for Tonic Circuits. It can be used for uh, different types of applications, uh, passive structures, optoelectronic um, applications, lasers, etc. So here would be a um, design example for a tunable hybrid pre-fired silicon laser. You feel the gain element, here the filter element, so this would be a cavity here. And you have lots of uh, benefits for this. Very important is actually that you can do um, uh, fast design and optimization of those um, uh, devices and also be able to do like tolerance analysis and perform sensitivity analysis. So um, what does it mean automatic design environment? It's, it's a bit more than just a model. Um, so you need to, first of all, you have these different building blocks here and depending on what you want to simulate, you have a different simulation domains. So typically linear passive elements can be solved ideally in a frequency domain, um, a dynamic tunable ones in a time domain, Near if, if you have a complex structure, so like optoelectronics here, you want to use both of them, time and frequency, to make them together. And I will show you an example later. And obviously, all those models here, you need to uh, be able to read and measure data. You want to add your own models, working on the simulation domains here, and of course, have a large library of behavioral and analytical models then. And very important, interfacing to device level simulators, here mode solving, a layout design tools, such as this one, and process design kits. So your models here become like the ones which are implemented in the fab. And we have a graphic user interface, obviously, and also very important uh, means for analysis, uh, sweeping, uh, calculus, and doing here some uh, histogram analysis. So one example, just on this one here, would be a multi-section of electronic devices. So we have models there which allow you to set up here multiple diverse device sections. This could be active gain blocks, passive or electro-absorption blocks there. And each of them could have individual pads there and, and drive them there with current or with voltage. And so you can build arbitrary um, structures in this way. Um, we allow to have an accurate modeling of uh, gratings, sample breaker on DFB-based gratings, and also um, account for the input of measured data from carrier dependent gain and voltage-dependent electro-absorption spectra. More details will be given tomorrow by my co-worker at 3 o'clock, so if you're interested in this one, please attend this uh, presentation. Um, so this is a tool I just mentioned, and it has certain input um, uh, needs. So one of our, another tool would be called BPI Mode Designer, which allows you to calculate um, the, uh, the model characteristics for the individual building blocks, waveguides, etc. And uh, of course, we also support uh, different uh, PDKs. It would be an example for the um, uh, uh, PDK from the Indian Phosphate uh, Lab in the Institute. 
And this example would here then a design based on some published um, 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 chip which was produced there. Here was a terahertz transmitter. And we did a bit more on the design than have your receiver, so it becomes a whole transceiver then. And uh, very important also, once the circuit design is done, you want to automatically uh, export it in a layout tool. In this case, we use here from Phoenix, the Opti designer, such that the uh, layout is automatically created and eventually port location and dimensions got fed back into our um, circuit designer. So let's uh, go quickly through a simple example. Um, just to explain um, the interface between layout and circuit simulation tools. So in this example, when I design a Marzin and a Formata, we have uh, two MMIs, and uh, we want to have this port be fixed, because maybe we have some uh, spot size converser at this point, and we want to have a very compact layout and a certain desirable free spectral range. So there's an optical parameter. This is like layout information. This is the whole design should serve this. So the circuit schematic is very easily created. So you have this building blocks here, like bands, straight wave cuts, and my structure. They all have parameters here. And we want to actually tune the radius parameter and uh, the length d parameter here, as functions here, such that we find the proper uh, free spectral range. Um, we don't have, from a circuit perspective, we don't have any needs for these lengths here. So they just should connect these points together. Um, and of course, we want to have that the last one, last port here, is that actually the, the port location should be fixed. If you just do this on circuit design itself, and then you do, maybe you're done, you do the export into a layout. Well, what you typically end up is, well, okay, here's my ports I want to have, I end up here, something is broken here. So actually, you have to go back then and realign the lengths a bit. So it becomes really a really tedious task. Because at the end, you have to manually go back and forth between of them, uh, between the layout version and the, um, the circuit level version. In this case, it's, re it's possible to calculate this directly. So you have here now some funny lengths here, which are connecting these ones. Or you can use here some uh, more complex um, uh, scripting, which adjusts the lengths of this one, depending on the radius and the, and the lengths we take. Um, so if I take now the layout of this, Everything is perfect. And now maybe in the next step I decide, well, I want to make it a bit more compact. So let's move those MM MMIs down. What does it essentially mean? I have to start all over again. Because I change here um, the lengths of those devices, so I have to go back um, all the time. So there needs to be some automated way of doing this. So an automated way of considering layout information into the circuit design. And uh, we do this by creating a dedicated libraries of elements supporting the specific uh, layout tools. So we have here um, one set of, of, building, oops, sorry, of building blocks here, which have information about the port location. So I can fix, um, to certain rules, the location of individual ports here. I don't have to, but I can uh, actually fix them to specific values. And I have other uh, elements, which are adaptive uh, elements, which you see in this case, uh, we have here length and height, this uh, disappeared. So you don't have information about the lengths are given. This information will be then calculated from the layout tool, fed back into the circuit simulation tool and used there. So these are, that's why, uh, adaptive elements. So using those uh, adaptive elements, things become much more easy. Um, my adaptive elements are here. I don't have a length parameter here. This will be calculated later. And I have just the ports here, this from this waveguide, the lower port I specified should be at this position directly, and this one and this one as well. And I also provide here the MZI should be relative to this point, should be placed in a certain position. And just as one step, automatic export, in this case to Opti Designer, um, gives me the layout I want to have. So instead of going back and forth, I do this one time only. And uh, so this is a layout information. I still want to make sure that I want to run the simulation now. Because initially in the circuit simulation, I don't have the lengths here, but the lengths will be calculated. Here I have the lengths. So what I need to do is actually uh, run the simulation, which means I go into Opto Designer, calculate those lengths, go back into the circuit simulation, and then I run the simulation. And this is done all in one step. So you press the button once, it goes to the layout tool, opens the layout tool, calculates the parameter, goes back, and at the end it gets to hear the spectrum, and you get the spectrum. So in this case, 180 gigahertz. I said, well, actually, I want to have 200. So what it means is I need to change this parameter R. 
mentioned before. So I can do this also uh, automatically by setting up a parameter sweep. So I sweep here on the radius R. And for each of those sweep points, I have to change the layout. So each of those points, I go back to the layout, get the proper information about uh, my other lengths here, and then I calculate the free spectral range. The whole thing just takes a few minutes now. So I can automatically uh, optimize my system. And base for this is like we have building blocks which allow me to analyze the spectrum coming out and calculate, in this case, the free spectral range, the mean and the variance. And one more step. Even if I say, no, okay, this is my optimum design, this is radius, I want to see what's happening if those waveguides width fluctuate a bit, if I have performance fluctuations, uh, depending on this one. So what would happen if I have 10 nanometer variation of a waveguide width around 1.2 micron? So what I can do, I can uh, set up here some rule, so this should be the mean width, I want to hear some variation, and hit the run button, and in this case here, width is actually a random number. So this one, this one here, this one. So that's actually performing, in this case, simple Monte Carlo simulation, all width variations independently from each other. And again, you have um, tools which allow you to extract the characteristics. And then you get all kinds of histograms here, like a free, how the free spectral range, in our case, would change if I change here around 10 nanometers. So this would be a simple example. Uh, last example, a bit more complex. Um, here it's a design for dynamic WDM channel equalizer. Um, we have here uh, five WDM channels. They're all set in this Mach Zehnder structure, where one arm is just here, if you have phase change here, and the other one goes first into an AWG with five channels getting out here. Each of the five arms has, can be individually tuned by a current here and then combined again, and then the phase difference adjusts that basically the amplitude. So that's, that's why dynamic channel equalizer and power. And uh, for this example here, um, just to highlight a few additional notes here, the um, active elements are simulated in time domain. This is, everything is passive here. So instead of solving each of them like a frequency individually, what we can do is I define this as a one passive structure and calculate one S matrix out of it. The advantage is I get a much, much higher accuracy for this than if I would have a very small element set. So that's why we call it hybrid time and frequency domain simulations. Also, we support um, advanced custom building blocks, so between AWG, designed by Bright Photonics. So if you look inside, it's very complicated uh, structure, and there's a certain layout behind or different types of layouts. And we support uh, hierarchical designs. So this uh, and the parameters here, if you internally, they're built out of other blocks, and they're actually using here again elastic or adaptive um, connectors here. And it's possible also to adjust uh, from the outside the internal characteristics. So this filters here would be a free spectrum range of 800, 400, and 200 um, gigahertz. So from the outside, they all look the same, but from the internal structure, actually, there would be different lengths. And there would be typical results. Again, we see here the um, exported layout. We see here the lengths. Each of those Marzenas um, is different. We see very funny lengths here. And this would be the result from the simulations um, before equalization. So channel three and five different powers after equalization, they are both the same. So in conclusion, um, to perform accurate and scalable um, simulation of integrated photonics and optoelectronic applications, you need to have multi-domain uh, multi-physics simulation engines, a seamless integration between circuit and layout uh, design tools, flexible adaptive means in, uh, creating your PDKs, and of course, a convenient means for design automation. And I hope I showed you some ways we do this. Thank you very much.